instead of complaining that he had no chance, instead of putting his time and wishing that everything was different, he did his duty where he was. And eventually folks found out and came and knelt at his feet and asked him for help. And I'm not saying, young man, young lady, person here today, that everything will, you'll get everything that you deserve. But I do say this, that the overwhelming majority of cases if any man or woman is of any real account, sooner or later, somebody will find it out. Many a flower may be born to die, to spend its scent on the desert uh, floor, but I'm telling you, you cannot conceal it forever. Sooner or later, somebody's going to hear about your character. They're going to hear about who you are and what you are and the sweetness and the, and the beauty of your life. Sooner or later, somebody's going to make a pathway to your door and ask you for help. So they came to Jephthah and asked for help. It was a humiliating experience for them. I suppose those half-brothers of Jephthah down in Israel, those brothers that had treated him so cruelly and called him such ugly names, I, uh, I believe uh, uh, not only did they call him names, but they robbed him of his share of the inheritance. Uh, I suppose they did some loud boasting then. Oh, Jephthah, he is a half-brother. Now that he's general, he's popular. Now that he's captain, everybody wants to be associated with him. You know, like us. I'm 121st away from the queen, but oh, I'm related to the queen. <laughs> That's the way we are. But Jephthah heard their request, and he promised to help them. And I think this is so beautiful of him. He could have said, listen, you kicked me out when I was a little helpless child. When I needed help, you wouldn't give me any help. But I needed help. You laughed at my childish tears. And, and you would not listen to the bleeding of my little heart. When I needed help, you'd scorn me and thrust me out. Now that you need help, I'm going to laugh at you. But there was nothing of uh, this kind of revenge in him. Wrong as he had been, he would not nurse his wrong. He would not allow bitterness to take up his spirit and make him bitter. I wish they were all so wise. You may have been injured years ago. Somebody, perhaps somebody in the church may have done you wrong. And now you say, well, I have no use for them and I have no use for the church. And you are now snapping and biting and snarling. <laughs> Listen to me. Don't let bitterness overtake you. Keep your spirit right. Keep your heart pure and clean. Ask God, wash me. And wash me again, Jesus. And wash me again, Jesus. And cleanse me again. Jesus, it happened five months ago, ten months ago, ten years ago. It doesn't matter. But Jesus, keep me clean. Keep me clean. Wash me over and over and over again. Let's lift our hands and ask to wash me. Wash me. Wash me. Wash me. God, I want to pull it those I want this fruit of this Holy Ghost to live and abide in me. Wash me again. Wash me again. Wash me again. Wash me, Jesus. How won't let you go. I don't know if you've ever read the book called Great Expectations. But in this book, Mrs. Harrison, Miss Harrison, rather, she was to be married. All the arrangements were made. The garden was arrayed and dressed, and, and the canopy was set, and all the beautiful fine linen was put out, and, and the plates were set, and, and she had invited her guests, and they were all making their way to her, her estate uh, for her wedding day. The wedding cake was set on the table, but at 20 minutes to 9, she received news uh, uh, from, from her groom uh, saying he was not coming. And so she had all the clocks 
stopped at 20 minutes to 9. She closed all the drapes to her windows. Uh, she allowed that a wedding cake to rot on its table. The blinds were drawn and no sunlight, sunlight was ever allowed to enter that home again. Life for her stopped at 20 minutes to 9. One disappointment wrecked her life, embittered her, and made her throw the rest of her life away. But Jephthah refused to be embittered. I refuse to allow bitterness to take hold of us. Hallelujah. I refuse to allow that thing to eat away at my life. And so he consented to go. And he undertook this campaign. And he stood. But before he went, he stood beside the altar of God. This man who lived among the heathens of Tob. But they had not heathenized him. He still stood true to that altar. Circumstances were against him. But salvation is not simply where circumstances are good. Salvation is for those whose circumstances are bad. Yes. Hello, hello, yeah. hello. Your test is not so much when everything's going good for you about your God and your salvation. Your test is when everything is going bad. How are you going to handle it? And how are you going to respond to it? How good can you take it to her? It's not if you have a devoted saints all around you at the office. It's how are you going to do in the midst of those that do not believe in God when you are down there in your office. Your salvation is not in the midst of everything going well, but in the midst of the godless crowd. How do you fare? Daniel, is your God able to deliver you? Oh, King, live forever in the midst of this godless situation that I am in. My God has shut the down lines now, and he is able to deliver me, and he will continue to deliver me. That is the test. It's not pleasant situations, but it's the test of how you're going to do in the midst of the hard circumstances, in the midst of the lion's dead. Oh, Daniel, how are you going to do in that situation? Joseph, what about you, Joseph? Your brother sold you out. You lost your daddy. You lost your homeland. Your brother sold and traded you out. And now that woman has lied about you. And you've been in this prison house uh, for 13 years, Joseph. What are you going to say now, Joseph? Uh, and all that has transpired. And finally, when his brother's going to be brought before him, Joseph said this. Uh, it was not you that sent me hither, but God sent me hither. to save my people alive. And to do he refused the circumstances to make him better and sour. He kept his faith in God. Ah, come on. Come on, let's worship him. Come on, let's praise him. Come on. My Jesus, in the midst of all, Jesus, keep me true. Keep me pure. Keep me in the hand. Keep me free. Ah, oh, sweet Jesus. And so Jephthah went to battle from an altar of prayer. And he made a vow, and it's this vow for him, for which he is most severely criticized. It's a vow that caused his name among those to be branded with shame. But hear me. He vowed that if God would give him the victory, he would offer to him whatever first came out of the doors of his house to meet him on his return. It was a rash vow. I grant you that. I admit that. But hear me, rash as it was, I do not find it in my heart to be severely critical of him. I rather join with those that praise this man. You know, what's the matter with a lot of us as church members? We're so prudent. We're so wise. We don't want to say anything rash. We are possessed uh, with a self-possession that we don't make any great commitments. Hello. We're so self-possessed that we're in danger of dying of self-control. Hello. 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 This man, this Jephthah, in the white heat of his enthusiasm, God, if you go with me, and if you be with me, and if you deliver the Ammonites into my hands, I vow to you, God, whatever comes out of my door first. 
first. When I return, I promise you I'll offer it as a burnt offering on your altar to you. I pledge that. I promise you that, God. I, I give you that. Uh, and it's not a pledge of a few dollars that he made. It was a pledge of a, something that was dear to him. We say we don't know that uh, uh, it comes time. Can I, can I pastor her a little bit? Home a little bit. Yes. The word of the Lord teaches tithing. Yes. yes, Lord, I'll do anything you say. But Lord, if I tithe, I don't know how I'm going to make it through the week. I have one month at the end of my paycheck. Oh, I promise you, Lord, I'll give an offering. And it comes offering time. Hello, good folks. I'm preaching to him too. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm pointing to him too. Hello, Amen. We we we. I heard of the man who he said, "I I, I pledge I'll give fifty dollars every Sunday to God and to the church." When it came Sunday and it time to write the check, he said, "You know, it's Sunday. I'm not supposed to work on Sundays, and so writing a check is working. So I'm not going to write a check." <laughs> But hear me, good people. Everybody that is highly praised in this Bible made a great sacrifice. Everybody who has high praise of sin about him was willing to make great sacrifices. Abraham was willing to give up an Isaac. It was a little widow woman who threw in her last two mites into the treasure. Her whole living. That's all she had for the rest of the month. She gave it away. It was Mary who squandered the whole box of ointments, broke that whole alabaster, alabaster box, poured it out on the feet of Jesus. A few drops would have been sufficient. But she broke it and poured it all out on him. And she, to her, a few drops were not enough. They were reckless. They, they were reckless in their enthusiasm and in their faith. And that's what made them immortal. And Jephthah made this vow and went to battle. He went confidently. He believed that if he would put himself into God's hands, that God would be at his disposal. And God would not disappoint him. And God did not disappoint him. He wanted the fight. He was victorious. The army came marching home. The soldiers are rejoicing. Uh, uh, but there is a strange tenseness on the face of Jephthah. This general is coming back from a, a great victory and the soldiers are happy and, and they're elated. Uh, but nobody understands why Jephthah seems so troubled and his countenance is so cast down. And then Jephthah has a round of bend in the road and he strains his eyes to look towards his own home and then suddenly his face freezes and goes deadly with pale as the blood leaves his face. He reels and rocks on his horse for out of the front door of his home comes his lovely little girl that dark haired sunny happy little face of a girl and she comes with singing and a timbrel and a dance how my daddy is victorious my daddy's home a victory for Israel my daddy's coming home from a great victory and the uh, father and daughter come face to face and just I imagine embraces her in a hard embrace oh daughter you brought me very long hallelujah The cup is almost too bitter to drink. He tells her the story. That little girl in sweet resignation understands the great sacrifice that has to be made. Jephthah was a hard man, you say, but do not judge him in the light of this 21st century. Judge him by the light of the day in which he lived. Remember this, that he was a man who made a promise yes. and had to keep his promise. Yes. He was a man who said, I have opened my mouth unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I cannot go back. 